In this video we're going to graph the circle 16 equals x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared and state the maximal domain and range. So when a circle is expressed in that form we can immediately see the transformations that have taken place. So first of all we can determine that it has a radius of 4 units which is found by taking the square root of 16, this number here. The next transformation that we can see is that it's been translated two units in the negative x direction. So if we have x plus 2 and we let that equal 0, we have x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 2. Next, we can see it's been translated three units in the positive y direction, and that's because of the y minus 3 here. So if we have y minus 3 equals 0, we get y equals positive 3. So using that information, we know that the centre of the circle is at negative 2, 3. So the next thing we need to do is determine any x and y intercepts for this circle. So the x intercepts occur when y is equal to 0. So when we do this, we get 16 is equal to x plus 2 all squared plus 0 minus 3 all squared. Now minus 3 all squared is 9. Therefore we have 16 is equal to x plus 2 all squared plus 9. So subtracting 9 from both sides, we have 7 is equal to x plus 2 all squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, we have x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. And then lastly, we subtract 2 from both sides, and we have x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. So that means that one x-intercept is at minus 2 minus root 7 comma 0 and the other is at minus 2 plus the square root of 7, comma 0. Now that we've found the x-intercepts, we go and we find the y-intercepts. So the y-intercepts can be found by letting x equal 0. So when we do that, we have 16 is equal to 0 plus 2 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared. And now 2 squared is 4, so we find that 16 is equal to 4 plus y minus 3 all squared. Subtracting 4 from both sides, we have 12 is equal to y minus 3 all squared. And now we take the square root of both sides, so taking the square root of both sides, we find that y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. And now, just as a side note, the square root of 12 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Of course, the square root of 4 is just 2, so we can simplify that down to 2 root 3. So we'll do that in this line, so we'll add 3 to both sides, and we'll find that y is equal to 3 plus or minus 2 root 3, which means that one y-intercept occurs at 0, 3 minus 2 root 3, and the other occurs at 0, 3 plus 2 root 3. So on that slide, we've gone through and we've understood where the centre of the circle is. So the centre is at minus 2, 3. We've found both x-intercepts, so that was here, and we've found both y-intercepts. So all we need to do is graph the circle with that information and plot those points. So on this slide, we've got the circle all graphed, and we've put all of the x and y-intercepts in. And now the last thing we need to do is determine the extreme points on the circle. So from our centre at negative 2, 3, 
what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract off the radius along the axial lines to find the extreme point. So if we go minus 2 plus the radius, which is 4, we get to the point 2, 3. And then if we take negative 2 and subtract the radius, which is 4, we get to minus 6, 3. And then if we do the same thing along the y-axis, if we take the y value, which is 3, and add on the radius, which is 4, we find that this is minus 2, 7. And lastly, if we take the y value of 3 and we subtract the radius, which is 4, we find this point, which is at minus 2, minus 1. So with this in mind, we can work out what the domain and range are. So the domain is all of the x values that are allowed in the function. So by inspecting the graph, we can see it starts here at negative 6 and goes through until 2. And both those values are included. So we write x is an element of square bracket to include negative 6 and through till 2 included. And then the range is all of the y values that come out of the function or for circles all the y values are allowed to go in and we find that that is y is an element of and now if we start down here we see that the smallest y value is negative 1 so that is included and it goes all the way through until 7 which is always included so that is the range of the graph So on this slide, all of that's just presented neatly, and over to the right we have the maximal domain and range of the graph restated.